Unfortunately, not all equine pregnancies have happy endings. Dr. Karen Wolfstorff of Haggard Equine Medical Institute is going to discuss some of the issues surrounding equine abortion. I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine healthcare. Welcome to the Ryder Report. What are some of the physical causes of abortion? Well, unfortunately, Erin, a lot of times we don't have an answer and we don't know what causes the abortion. Uh, sometimes it can actually occur during the birthing process in which is hypoxemia or lack of oxygen to the full. Probably the most common cause of physical abortion um, is a um, umbilical cord torsion. And it's believed that umbilical cord torsions occur when the umbilicus becomes longer than it should be and it twists and twists and twists on itself and eventually cuts off the blood supply um, and the drainage to and from the foal. And therefore the foal goes ahead and dies. And a lot of times you'll just find the foal um, in the field with the placenta and you'll just find this really long twisted umbilicus. That's usually the most common cause of a non-infectious abortion. And what are some of the infectious reasons? The infectious reasons um, can be numerous, unfortunately. Uh, we see uh, equine herpes virus, one, can cause abortion. It usually used to cause more of what we call abortion storms, is that one horse would come in and abort and expose all the other mares, and then you'd have abortion after abortion and abortion. The lucky thing is, is that we have a great vaccine, Pneumabort K, that helps to prevent this disease, and so we see more sporadic causes of abortion due to herpes virus one now than what we used to do. Um, the other causes of infection disease would be leptospirosis with the increasing wetness that we had this past four, fall we've seen an increasing number of leptospirosis abortions we don't um, really know how exactly um, it happens except we do know that different there are different hosts in this area we have the raccoon we have the skunk who are hosts that then transfer the leptospirosis organism via feces or urine usually into the environment. The horses become exposed. It causes a placentitis that occurs systemically and goes into the vessels um, of the placenta causing abortion. And we usually will be able to diagnose that both with getting high titers in the mare as well as looking at the placenta and the fetus for the leptospirosis organisms either through staining or histochemistry. Speaking of infectious causes and abortion storms, what are some of the biosecurity concerns to have in mind should an abortion occur on your farm? Well, the most important thing when an abortion occurs on your farm is to assume that it is infectious until proven otherwise. And that means that you want to isolate your mare. Don't move her, if she is aborted in a, in a stall, don't move her out of that stall, don't move her to any other part of your farm. Just keep her in that stall where you have found her, but make sure that everybody wears booties and gloves and protective clothing when they deal with that mare until we know what the cause is. If they have aborted in a field, um, what you would like to try and do is isolate that area which the mare has aborted either by rope um, if possible because the, pl the fetal fluids are usually the most infectious part to other mares and so the thing that mares like to do is when you have an aborted fetus they all like to come over they like to sniff away and become exposed the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to start moving those potentially exposed mares out of that paddock into different paddocks because then you potentially expose more horses. But what you do want to do is you want to continue to monitor those mares very closely for any signs of impending abortion. You want to monitor their temperatures. You want to monitor, make sure they're eating and drinking um, and acting normally. No vulva discharge, no mammary gland development. And one thing that you can do with mares that potentially have been exposed to leptospirosis is to go ahead and pull leptospirosis titers on any of those mares that may have been exposed to a similar situation as your abortion mare. If an abortion occurs, who do you need to call? 
most important thing to do if an abortion does occur is to call your veterinarian because they will be able to provide you with all the details as to how you can secure and protect the rest of your herd as well as come out, examine the mare, make sure she doesn't have any retained placenta, make sure that um, you can do a uterine culture to determine if the abortion was due to placentitis, examine the placenta, examine the fetus, and then take the appropriate specimens needed to be sent to a diagnostic lab to determine what is the actual course of that abortion. Thanks very much. That's it for this week's Rider Report. Visit thehorse.com for all the latest news on equine healthcare, management, and welfare. I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine healthcare. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.